I signed the lease for the shop in uh, March of 2020. And then like three or four days later is when the shutdown happened. I thought I ruined my whole life. A very risky time to open a business. So what I did was put all those fears aside, you know, and just be like, all right, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, you're scared, who cares, go. You know, just, just get on it. Because, you know, the opportunity and the luck of even opening a shop, I took it so seriously. So serious to me that like, I'm not gonna even attempt to work for somebody else. You know, like this is it. I knew at a pretty young age that no matter how much somebody's paying me, it doesn't matter. I will never be happy unless I'm doing what feels right. You know, I think all artists are kind of like that. There's some uh, itch to be scratched and you could be getting paid for fucking $20 million a year. It doesn't matter. If that itch isn't being scratched, that's not, you're not alive. I don't feel alive. In this country, you know, everything's designed for comfort and ease. That's what's promoted mediocrity, like so much, you know, and that's what's keeping people from taking a risk and starting their own business and like, you know, doing what they want to do. But like I said, man, if you, just that risk is good for you. Good for me. Inspiration is literally to, to create something from nothing that's functional forever. I think one of my favorite things about this is that there's no rules, man. You know, you can do whatever. You can do, of course there's like, there's better techniques to do this or that, but like, there are no rules. It's just a raw material. Just have fun with it. I pretty much never make the same thing twice. To kind of be able to give an individual something that's special to them and only to them. And that they're the only ones with that piece in the world. Always individual, everything different, every time. I feel comfortable around other people who are like, don't give a fuck about anything except for like, what makes them feel good in this world, you know? It makes them feel like they're fitting somewhere. You know, even though that like, you barely fit anywhere. <laughs> you know, those are the type of people that I like to make things for. The essence of leather is kind of like, it's a tough material, it's an organic material. It is somewhat difficult to work with, you know. It takes, it takes a little muscle here and there, uh, patience, a lot of patience, so. Leather's unforgiving, it really makes you learn from your, your mistakes, you know. You're not gonna blow it two times in a row, hopefully. That goes hand in hand with, with you know, starting your own business. It takes all of you, it takes all of your mind, all of your time takes your whole body and it's, it isn't comfortable. E everything's a little harder. It's my shortest day is 12 hours, you know, but it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like 12 hours because it's fulfilling. The name 1979 Co. came about, because 1979 was the year I was born and when I was gonna take the step to do this, it was kind of like a rebirth. It's like cut, I cut out serious shit in my life, like an income, you know what I mean? So like, I was just like, well, here we go. It's like a whole new beginning. There's a certain time where you have to just, just stop thinking about it. Stop calculating numbers or whatever. And, and the logistics of it, just go, just fucking go. You figure it out, you know, at least try, at least try to do it. If you fail, you just learn, that's it. You know, the only time you fail for real is when you die and that's it. So. Yeah, fail, it's fine, fuck it. I like risking it all. That's from skateboarding. I skateboarded my whole life. Like that was the biggest thing in my life. I feel like a lot of people don't really know what skating is, and it's just cruising around. Skateboarding is, it's the hardest thing I've ever done, and it's beat me up more than anything in the world. Broke this six times. Broke my leg, broke my ankle. Skating will teach you how to um, eat shit. It's bad, you know.
somewhere between 2003 and 2005, um, blew my knee out skating uh, really bad, like all the way, snapped all the ligaments in half. They said that it's uh, consistent with when people get hit by a car. It was like a huge turning point for me because every day at that time, that's all I did was I set out, you know, I didn't have to ask a friend what's going on. It's like, where are we going? Where are we skating? That, that's how it was. You know, when all that stuff's taken away. Yeah, it was definitely like a holy shit moment, you know, like figure out like, okay, what the hell am I going to do now? You know, like, how am I going to, how am I going to feel good when my favorite thing was taken away, basically. That's when the band started. The song's called Never Enough Room. I got into a band, Demiricus. Like crazy wild metal, like Slayer, but gnarlier, you know, it's wild. We were like full time, like we got signed and we were on tour between two and 300 shows a year. That, that was basically my life, it was music and then in between tours I would come back and then surf tables like at a restaurant or whatever, pick up any job. Thanks. Long story short, I got so fed up and so depressed and unfulfilled working just whatever jobs. That's how I found leather. So that's where this all started, was just being so unfulfilled. I had a friend, uh, Jesse Corbett, who was doing this about 15, 20 years ago, like the real handmade stuff. And when I saw the way he did it, I was like, shit, I can do that. I think I can figure that out. My brain just exploded with ideas. I had a million ideas and I hadn't even, even gotten to 90% of them. Part of what really like catapulted me was I paid rent one time off of just the leather stuff I made. This is before I had a shop or anything. And that was the day I decided I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna do it and risk it because that risk wasn't as scary as like literally working for somebody else my whole life. That was more scary to me than, you know, quitting jobs and doing what I want to do. Having something hard to do, something that's creative and hard to do, is such a big deal in my life. I have to have that somehow. Now it's this, so I'm obsessed with it. Waking up every single night, 3 and 4 a.m. still, thinking about a stitch line in a bag and stuff like that. And I didn't think I would be able to be obsessed with something this late in life. You know what I mean? Like, usually everything's like in your 20s and 30s where you're just like exploding with passion for shit. It happened to me when I was like 41. You know, but if, I, if this whole thing fell through tomorrow, fuck it. Uh, it's good, I got all this experience. You know what I mean? It's just another step. Maybe a lot of people are afraid of that. Get into it. You should have everything on the line. If you don't, you're probably not, you're not working to your potential. You know, or at least trying to. No longer in my life will I accept not being fulfilled. <clears throat> I feel like that's living. And you know, when you have dead friends, dead parents, this and that, they don't have a choice of what to do anymore. I get to have a choice, so I'm gonna take it.